শুভ সন্ধ্যা এখন ক্যানবেরাতে সময় রাত আটটা শুরু হচ্ছে ক্যানবেরার টু ডাবল এক্স কমিউনিটি রেডিও স্টেশন থেকে প্রচারিত সাপ্তাহিক বাংলা অনুষ্ঠান বাংলা রেডিও এই অনুষ্ঠান প্রচারিত হচ্ছে কমিউনিটি ব্রডকাস্টিং ফাউন্ডেশন লিমিটেড ও বাংলাদেশ অস্ট্রেলিয়া অ্যাসোসিয়েশন ক্যানবেরার সৌজন্যে প্রতি সোমবার এই অনুষ্ঠান প্রচারিত হয় এফ এম ব্যান্ড নাইনটি আজ অনুষ্ঠান পরিচালনায় আছি আমি রাকিবুল শেখ শ্রোতাবন্ধু আজকের অনুষ্ঠানটি মূলত একটি সাক্ষাৎকারকে নিয়ে সাক্ষাৎকারটি গ্রহণ করেছে আসমা শেখ আসমা সাইরা ও বাংলাদেশি একজন ভালো পদার্থবিজ্ঞানী এবং নাসাহে কাজ করেছে অভিজ্ঞতা আছে এরকম একটি মানুষকে সে পেয়ে তার সঙ্গে খুবই উদ্বুদ্ধ হয়ে সে একটি সাক্ষাৎকার গ্রহণ করে যেটা সে আশা করছে যারা যারা শুনবেন তারা উপকৃত হবেন বা তারাও অনুপ্রাণিত হবেন তার মতো একজন বিজ্ঞানী হতে নাম হচ্ছে যা সাক্ষাৎকার নিয়েছে আসমা তার নাম হচ্ছে লামিয়া মাওলা আসুন আমরা মূল অনুষ্ঠানে যে লামিয়ার কাছ থেকে এবং আসমার কাছ থেকে শুনে নিই ওদের কথোপকথনের সাক্ষাৎকারটি আশা করি অনুষ্ঠানটা আপনারা উপভোগ করবেন Good morning everyone. Today I'm here with a Bangladeshi genius turned well-established astrophysicist Lamia Maula. Hi Lamia, how are you today? I'm doing very well and I've been having a nice conversation with you over dinner so it's been a great time so far. <laughs> <laughs> I would love if we could start from the very beginning. Where were you brought up and what school did you go to? Yeah, so I grew up, uh, I was born and raised in Dhaka in Bangladesh. Um, I grew up near the Gakrail area and I went to school in those little flowers. Oh, that's amazing. And then from there you've traveled across multiple continents. And where was your first destination after year 12 and how did you come across this opportunity? Yeah, so when I was uh, around year 10, so I, I guess where you are right now, <laughs> um, I kind of knew that I wanted to be a physicist. Like physics was something that I was really enjoying in high school and um, I also that was the first time that I started doing lab work in school and I just really wanted to continue working in the lab as a researcher so I was looking for college opportunities um, that had that kind of very hands-on research experience and I found that there were a lot of opportunities in America in the US where they have these colleges where undergraduate students get to have um, get to do cutting-edge research with um, you know faculty and researchers So I applied to Wealthy College um, in Massachusetts, which is mm-hmm. an all-women's college. Um, and it's also cross-registered with MIT, which was one of the main yeah. stars for me to verge it. So that's where I went the first time. Um, I was on a student and full financial aid, which, uh, which really helped, mm-hmm. um, which made it possible actually for me to leave Bangladesh and go there and do my undergraduate mm-hmm. for four years at Wealthy College. Um, And, yeah, that's where uh, my journey started, obviously. <laughs> that's amazing. So, from Wellesley College in America, where did you go from there? Yeah, sure. After Wellesley College, I actually was, um, I took a year off because I wasn't quite sure mm-hmm. um, if I wanted to be a physicist, if I, um, I knew that I really enjoyed teaching and outreach type of work, and I yeah, wasn't sure if that absolutely. was something. Um, I wanted to go into more or if it is going to graduate school to do full-time research. Mm-hmm. So I took a year off um, and then during that time is when I first came to Australia because there was a summer program mm-hmm. at the Australian Astronomical Observatory which actually does not exist anymore. <laughs> It's part of Macquarie University now but I did a four-month summer program over there. Um, I also worked at Oxford for three years in England during that time and then I went back to Bangladesh and worked uh, on outreach for about seven months or so and during that time I realized that you know I really do miss being in a lab that's what I was doing in in my undergrad time so I applied for graduate school and I went to Yale University uh, in uh, Connecticut US so back to America Mm -hmm. Um, and I did my PhD there for six years 
And after that, I went, moved to Toronto, um, at the University of Toronto. Mm-hmm. I was working with the Canadian team for the James Webb Space Telescope. Wow. Um, so that was my next um, step. Wow. <laughs> So right now, which telescope are you working on? So I still work with the James Webb Space yeah. Telescope, which was launched in the year 2021 in December. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's been almost two years now. And I was um, I went to Canada to work with one of the teams that was building one of the instruments yeah. that went on that telescope. So we were the science teams that was using data from mm-hmm. that telescope and um, uh, understanding the universe and how they work. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. And from my understanding, the telescope is somehow linked to like NASA. Yeah, so it's uh, this James Webb Space Telescope. It's a successor of the Hubble Space Telescope, mm-hmm. which you may have heard about. So Hubble was launched in the 90s, and I did my PhD work on Hubble Space Telescope. Mm-hmm. Um, so James Webb is the um, successor of that, and it's, it's a telescope that has been built by NASA in America, um, Canadian Space Agency, CSA, and European Space Agency, ESA. So it's a joint venture between NASA, CSA, and ESA, and they run all the programs on it together. Yeah. Yeah. So I was working previously on the Canadian Space Agency mm-hmm. part of the program, but now that I'm back in the U.S., um, I've been more on the NASA side of things. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. So you went from Bangladesh all the way to America and then Australia and then Canada and now <laughs> back in America. Yeah. That's pretty amazing. And I know this is a very long journey, but what is what are your future plans for the next five years? Yeah, so right now I am an assistant professor at Wellesley College in mm-hmm. my alma mater where I went for you know, for the first time for my undergraduate degree. Um I have been I just started working there in September. Um in a tenure track position so Mm -hmm. the next five years I will try to grow my own research group at Wellesley College Um, it's a a women's only college so I do have currently a big quite a big research group of 16 undergraduate students who are coming from you know very um, diverse economic and social backgrounds Mm -hmm. um, from all over the world actually um, and um, I want to continue growing my research group over there. I also want to continue my own research. Of, uh, so I study galaxy formation. Um, Ooh, so very fancy. <laughs> so that's something that I would like yeah. to continue working with the James Webb Space Telescope. Um, and also I would like to uh, get more involved with some programs in Bangladesh. Yeah. Um, so start, Absolutely. Uh, come back to your roots. Exactly. Yeah. So, um Starting some programs that are permanent and ties between my current position at Wolfie and in London, and yeah. something that I can, you know, continue building. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds yeah. perfect. Very yeah. full circle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so obviously, through this very long journey, moving from country to country as a culturally and linguistically diverse woman, what were some of the hurdles you faced in a male-dominated workplace? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, physics is a very, as you, like you just mentioned, it's a male-dominated uh, workforce. Um, currently, less than 20% of physicists and astronomers are women. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I came back to Wellesley, because um, when you are focusing on, you know, a particular group who are underrepresented and underserved, it helps you, um, uh, it, it helps you elevate their uh, them more. So when I was at Wellesley, um, I think I under like there were a lot of leadership roles that mm-hmm. I stepped into during that time. That uh, when I left Wellesley, I kind of found myself continuing to take some leadership positions yeah. elsewhere. Um, so even though I I was you know there had been times where I was the only woman on the team, mm-hmm. but I was also the one who was the um, the organizer of everything mm-hmm. and kind of was running the show in a way um, yeah. because I, as an undergrad, I had learned to kind of step into that leadership position mm-hmm. where you see a disarray, you kind of like immediately step in and try to organize and make it uh, work. There, ha- it, it can get uh, become a very lonely journey yeah. in some places where you go and you do not, you know, you look around and you yeah. do not see anyone who... And you feel like you don't belong. Exactly. Yeah. So I, I remember in graduate school, there it, 
there were quite a lot of years, you know, like all through graduate school that I had, it was question that is this where I really mm-hmm. want to be? Do I, can I continue doing this and being in this isolated for mm-hmm. so long? But as you, I think, um, you know, as you kind of start going up the ladder, even though it does become even more isolating because there are fewer and fewer and fewer women in the top position, you also have uh, a lot more resources now um, mm-hmm. at your uh, disposal so you can start doing all the things that you have wanted to do all this time, mm-hmm. which is the fun part for me. So when I was a grad student, I would think that, you know, if I had was in a position of power, this, 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 this are the things that I will change, and now I can actually go in yeah. and do those. And um, so even though it had been quite an isolating and lonely journey mm-hmm. in some ways, it was also empowering in yeah, many ways. Yeah, exactly. Because you have learned a lot of things um, from being in that position um, of, I guess, lack of resource and now you're in a position of power and you can make some changes. Exactly. So even though you face so much adversity on your journey and maybe probably still to this day (laughs) where you face a lot of issues and a lot of bias in the workplace, but it ultimately led you you to a really empowered state. Yeah, I would would say so because, you know, you you can think of this as, um, you know, all all the experience that you gather um, are what you... It is actually making you in a much better mm-hmm. um, position to lead a lot of this, yeah. you know, lead the solution of a lot of this problem. Absolutely, yeah. and now you can use your own experience and your knowledge and your empowerment to help others yes. in situations. Yeah. So this is kind of segueing to my final question. Yeah. What are some words of advice that you would say to aspiring young, diverse women like yourself? Yeah, um, I would say that... Um, just keep pushing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know, it, it at some point it does feel that oh, this is not worth it, and um, it's going to be a very, very lonely journey. Yeah. But um, you will see that when across the room, in some room somewhere, you do find that other person who do look like mm-hmm. you. You form you, you form this bond that is su- such a lifelong bond. You yeah. Know? Um, okay. And it it, it it's. It, over time, it does become a less isolating place mm-hmm. because you find all these people. Um, so keep pushing and you know keep looking for. You always have to. You do have to find um, allies for yourself. Mm-hmm. You can. You, there is nothing that we can kind of do on our own. So I guess the advice that I always give my students is that find your support system mm-hmm. wherever you are. Um, you have to find your own support system, be that in your family, in your workplace, in among your classmates, among your, um, I don't know, online community forums. Um, but you do have to find the support system that when you are not feeling up to 100% and, you're, and you are kind of questioning things, they are the ones who will cheerlead you and push you and, you know, put you over that hurdle. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming today and sharing your incredible journey of academia and battles and everything. Thank you so much and I hope all the best to you. Thank you so much for your time and all those great questions. It was lovely. Good night. Hello everyone, we are here with Lummi Amala once again sharing her incredible journey. If you've been listening in, we've heard all about her journey from Bangladesh to America to Australia to Canada and back to America and now full circle back to Bangladesh. And now I've heard you have some programs in Bangladesh where you have come back to your roots and made a full circle impact to empower and better the, and better the world. It would be great if you could please elaborate further on these on these amazing actions that you are taking. Sure, yeah. Um, so there are a couple of programs um, that are currently going on in Bangladesh that I'm involved with. So, for example, um, I mentioned that when I was doing my, uh, my year off between undergraduate and graduate school, um, I went to Bangladesh to work for seven months. Um, and during that time, I started this program um, called Bangladesh Science Outreach, um, which was 
as the name suggests, um, <laughs> it was a science outreach <laughs> program in Bangladesh. Um, so what we were doing is that we um, were, it, it was, it was um, organized by a group of about 20 volunteers uh, from universities in Dhaka, and they would um, create this small one-hour or two-hour program mm -hmm. for um, fourth, fifth graders in uh, in schools um, that are quite rural and are yeah. do not have a lot of resources. So some of the schools, for example, that we were going to did not even have electricity. Mm. Um, the, uh, so we went to women's schools, we went to madrasa, mm -hmm. so these are like Islamic schools. Yeah. Um, and a lot of the schools did not have a science on their curriculum. Mm. Um, so what we would do is that we, uh, the program, they had these multiple wings that were, they could make um, and these workshops on chemistry, on physics, mm -hmm. on um, climate change, on um, agriculture, so like you know, things that our students are already exposed to on their day-to-day -day life and this will be like hands-on activities that they will do so they will make you know helicopters out of like um, recycled bottles and things like that so uh, we were just trying to show the kids that there is um, science all around you yeah. and you just have to ask the questions and you have to be very curious about your surroundings and um, you have to not um, always ask the question and not take every information mm -hmm. uh, that is given to you without asking first that, oh, is that this information that I'm giving is it right or wrong, which is yeah. very relevant to this today's day, right? That we are very much now um, not asking enough questions mm -hmm. is what I think. That yeah, we are always absolutely. being influenced by yeah. everything that's going on around us. So this was back in 2013, 2014, mm -hmm. and that program ran for about a, a year or two. Um, but then I had to move away, move back to U.S. for my graduate school. Yeah. Um, so recently, uh, it was from about 2022, um, I uh, started this another program mm -hmm. in collaboration with another uh, faculty in Bangladesh, uh, Professor Khan Asad at in Independent University of Bangladesh. Um, so he is actually one of the first astronomers that I know of who has a Ph.D. in astronomy mm -hmm. um, and returned to Bangladesh to teach. Um, mm. And so when I heard that you know there was an astronomer in Bangladesh, yeah, um, that's been really inspiring. It it was because yeah. I didn't all the I do know a lot of Bangladeshi mm -hmm. who are in astronomy, but most of us actually do not return. Yeah, exactly. we are working on that. So I got very excited and I reached out to him, um, and um, we had a fantastic collaboration. He came visited me in Toronto, mm -hmm. um, and we started this program called Durbin. Mm -hmm. uh, which uh, Durbin is in Bengali, it's binocular or telescope. Mm. Um, so, uh, but it's actually also an acronym. It's uh, Durbin stands for Durbishir Nagarik, mm -hmm. uh, which means citizen of the universe. Um, so, but this pro with this program, uh, we have this a few telescopes that the University of Toronto gave to independent university in Bangladesh. And the students in our country, they are trained to use this telescope. Mm. And these are quite portable and mobile telescopes. Yeah, so they just very, take practical. very practical. Very mm practical, -hmm. yeah. So, and, uh, so they take these telescopes and they just go around the country. Mm -hmm. um, they go to like, different neighborhoods and they do programs at night mm -hmm. uh, where t people can look through the telescope at the night sky. Um, and these programs that they're doing, um, these telescopes, they are uh, very state-of-the-art telescopes. You can just connect mm -hmm. them to your phone um, mm. and the pictures come directly to your phone. Um, it doesn't have to be in a very, um, you know, uh, it, the setup is very easy so students can just take them out and put them uh, on the sky, you know, in mm -hmm. a matter of minutes or so. And we we had incredible, incredible response yeah. from this, pr like all, um, it has been running um, for over a year now and so far, um, I, I mean, you know, I am not in so much involved in the running anymore because the students are so incredible in running yeah. and who, who are running the program. Um, but no, I'm sure you were still like <laughs> a very big pillar <laughs> in what they've built. Yeah, uh, but I, I just keep on seeing that they're going around the country and they're like pulling this, uh, putting these events together and mm -hmm. hundreds and hundreds of people are coming because mm -hmm. um, there is so much curiosity mm -hmm. about space and astronomy about science in Bangladesh. Yeah, um, that you just have to, you know, uh, open that door. Exactly. Yeah. If, you build, if you bring a little bit of resource and a build, little bit of enthusiasm mm -hmm. to them, um, they are very respondent yeah. uh, to it. So that program has been running for, uh, it, you know, it's still going on mm -hmm. the, at, at full speed um, and um, 
um, yeah, I, I think yeah. Like, I, I'm looking forward to seeing what they do. Next. Absolutely. And this may be a little bit off topic, but it would be quite interesting. Since you've visited these rural areas and you've seen firsthand this digital divide, what are your thoughts and what do you think we can do to better help them and actually spark this new curiosity and advance maybe their aspiring, their aspirations yeah. in your line of work? Yeah. So one thing that I've noticed in Bangladesh is that you know it's not you do not really have to do a lot to spark the mm-hmm. interest. The interest is almost always there. Yeah. Um, you, what what they really do need is the, are the resources. Yeah. Um, the opportunities. The opportunities. Um, so uh, it, it's quite different from doing outreach in North America or Europe and Australia, where you kind of have to spend a little bit of effort in bringing in in getting the people mm-hmm. interested mm-hmm. in what you're talking about, where the resources are there. Mm-hmm. But, doing res- uh, but doing outreach in Bangladesh is that the interest is never yeah. an issue. So the students are so curious. The, mm-hmm. the kids are so curious. Yeah, they have absolutely. Such, such great questions. Mm-hmm. Like we've been to madrasas. Um, and where you know you they, you have these little girls who are wearing like hijab mm-hmm. and like not even just hijab they're wearing niqab they're like mm-hmm. their full face is closed but you can see it in their eyes yeah. like they light up absolutely you know? um, so it is really a lot about building uh, bringing these resources so I think a way to move forward is really um, getting the community together because um, it's not something that I think the government has the bandwidth mm-hmm. uh, for to be doing. Um, that we really need to get the community involved if we have, um, you know, the well-off members of our mm-hmm. community, if they can bring these resources to their community mm. schools um, and encourage their university students to do something for the younger generation. Um, I think there is a lot of um, seed level, like, you know, yeah, grassroots absolutely. level work that can be done yeah. right at home. Absolutely. Yeah. This is amazing, all of this work that you've been doing in Bangladesh. And even if you may not be... So there right now, right. you've definitely been very instrumental in this. No, thank you. You're very kind. But mm-hmm. I, I do, I mean, I know, but, you know, more of the um, kudos goes to, like, the students who mm-hmm. are undergraduate students who are doing, you know, full-time, um, they're, they're full-time students, they're doing their studies. They are probably doing, like, tutoring to make money. But at the same time, they're somehow carving out 10 hours per week mm-hmm. of their time to volunteer and give back to the community. Like, they're the real uh, heroes in my yeah. eye who I absolutely. I absolutely, like, admire them for mm-hmm. so much of how much stamina and enthusiasm mm-hmm. they have despite um, it not always being such a rewarding mm-hmm. job. Um, but they just keep on pushing Absolutely. and they just keep on doing these yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah, I love how you keep talking about this circle of inspiration <laughs> where everyone kind of feeds off each other, where you hear about astronomers moving back to Bangladesh and that inspires you to go back. Yeah. But then watching these kids, it also inspires you. So yeah. it's very, very circular. Yeah. And in saying how you've shown all these kids the beauty in astrophysics, yeah. <laughs> it would be amazing to hear in more depth what you are currently researching. Yeah, so my research, um, I study galaxy formation. Um, and what that means is that, so we live in the planet Earth, mm-hmm. which is in the solar system. Mm-hmm. So there are you know, eight or nine planets around our sun. And the sun is one of the stars in this gigantic galaxy mm-hmm. um, called the Milky Way. So the sun is a very regular star. And there are over... Um, trillion stars mm. in our Milky Way, just like our sun. Uh, some are hotter than our sun, some are cooler than the sun, but there are, the sun is just one of them. So, uh, in this Milky Way, and the Milky Way is just one of the galaxies mm-hmm. in this universe. Um, and there are, you know, trillions and trillions and trillions of galaxies in this universe. Mm-hmm. Um, so what we try to understand is how our galaxies, how, where do galaxies come from, where, mm. how were they born, so right after the Big Bang, what happened, mm-hmm. when were they created, um, how did they evolve over time, um, and how is it that our Milky Way came to where it is today, mm-hmm. is our Milky Way some uh, very typical galaxy, mm-hmm. or is it a special type of galaxy mm-hmm. to be harboring a life like us on this planet Earth, 
Um, so that, those are the things that I study. Uh, so I'm an observational extragalactic astronomer, mm -hmm. uh, which means that I, um, my focus is um, using telescopes to get observation of them. And then um, it's also extragalactic, which means that um, extragalactic means galactic is like Milky Way, and extra means outside. So I study everything that is outside the wow. Milky Way. <laughs> so, um, so as an extragalactic astronomer, uh, uh, it has been incredible to be working on the James Webb Space mm -hmm. Telescope, uh, because one of the main missions of this telescope was actually to study how galaxies were formed. Um, that's what that NASA created this telescope for. Mm -hmm. So it had. Um, so we use uh, this telescope to take images of our night sky of these different galaxies mm -hmm. um, across the sky, and we try to understand their properties. How much stars do they have? How much um, stars are being born? Are the stars dying? And are there planets in them? Um, so all these questions that we're trying to answer. Oh, it's a very planets. big money question. <laughs> Yeah. It's making my daily question seem a bit funny now. I'm like, what am I wearing in the morning? That's like the extent where I'm asking questions. This is amazing. But your curiosity and your strive takes mm -hmm. you. So, yeah. So, perfect. Thank you so much for coming and talking to us once again. It was amazing hearing your journey, where you are, where you've been, and where you're coming back to. So, thank you again. And goodbye. Thank you. Thank you for your time. শ্রোতা বন্ধু আশা করি অনুষ্ঠানটি আপনারা উপভোগ করলেন অনুষ্ঠানটির মাধ্যমে যারা শুনলেন তারা লামিয়াকে চিনতে পারলেন বা লামিয়ার কাছ থেকে জানতে পারলেন বাঙালি হিসেবে তারা কত সফলভাবে কাজ করছে মার্কিন যুক্তরাষ্ট্রের মতো দেশ বড় বড় দেশগুলোতে পদার্থবিজ্ঞানী হিসেবে এবং অন্যান্য দিকগুলো যেগুলো ধরা হলো লামিয়া অন্যান্য কাজগুলো যেগুলো করছে বাংলাদেশে সেগুলো উদ্ধ করবে এবং আপনারা যদি কেউ লামিয়া এবং আসমা এদের সঙ্গে যোগাযোগ করতে চান আমাদের অনুষ্ঠানের মাধ্যমে যোগাযোগ করতে পারেন তারা আপনাকে তাদের অনেক কিছু জিনিস সঙ্গে সাহায্য করতে পারবে সহযোগিতা করতে পারবে আপনাদেরকে পদার্থ বিজ্ঞানী হিসেবে গড়ে তুলতে অসংখ্য ধন্যবাদ শ্রোতা বন্ধু আজকের অনুষ্ঠান এখানে শেষ প্রান্তে এসে পৌঁছেছে আশা করি অনুষ্ঠানটি আপনারা ভালো লেগেছে বাংলা রেডিও আপনাদের কেমন লাগে জানালে আমরা খুশি হব আপনাদের মতামত জানাবার ঠিকানা হল বাংলা রেডিও অ্যাট জিমেল ডট কম আমাদের অনুষ্ঠান ইন্টারনেটেও শোনা যায় ঠিকানা ডাব্লিউ 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 বাংলা রেডিও ডট ও আর জি ডট এইও শ্রোতা বন্ধু আপনি যদি বাংলা রেডিও ফেসবুক গ্রুপে যোগ দেন তাহলে আমরা আমাদের ফেসবুক গ্রুপের মাধ্যমে আপনাকে আমাদের অনুষ্ঠানের খবর পাঠাতে পারি আজকের অনুষ্ঠানটিতে বাজানো গানটি ইউটিউব থেকে নেওয়া হয়েছে আশা করি অনুষ্ঠানটি খুব ভালো লেগেছে আমাদের আজকের অনুষ্ঠানের এখানেই সমাপ্তি আপনারা যে যেখানেই থাকুন সুস্থ থাকুন আনন্দে থাকুন ও শান্তিতে থাকুন এই কামনা করে আজ জানিয়েছি আমি তাকে বলছি শুভ রাত্রি